All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for sticking around. Sorry about that. I had to move inside the hangar because uh, it uh, was getting a little dark out there. Anyway, um, so we were, we were uh, ID ratios, and I was showing you how um, when I manipulate the uh, the respiratory rate, it manipulates the ID ratio. And uh, we were talking about, you know, well, why does that happen, and what physiologic effect does that have? on our patients. Um, so let me get into this a little bit more. Um, come back over here to IE. Okay, so uh, one to three, we talked about the, you know, you add, add, the, add the two numbers together and multiply it by your, your, your respiratory rate and that's gonna be, um, you know, that should equal 60. So you understand that this is basically 15 seconds of inhalation time followed by 45 seconds of exhalation time over the course of a full minute, okay? So, um, whoops. So my, uh, my rate, uh, is, my inhalation time is, is one second, so it's getting one second of inhalation followed by three seconds of exhalation. Okay, so let's, let's look at this real quick. I'm gonna come over here to, um, to minute ventilation. I'm gonna kind of just give you a little bit of a, uh, an explanation of why we would, um, why we're gonna, you know, why we might manipulate one over the other. So uh, we know that we need to maintain an adequate minute ventilation, okay? Um, between five and seven liters a minute. If I drop the patient's respiratory rate in, in an attempt to in an attempt to prolong their IDE, right, say I want an IDE time of, uh, you know, one to four, okay, you can see the, the, the ventilator will uh, predict for me what that, that IDE ratio is going to be once I uh, select this, okay? So once I select it, you can see now my IDE ratio is one to four. Now, why would I do this? Okay, typical IDE ratio is one to two or one to three, depending on the patient's, um, you know, work of breathing. But say I've got that severe asthmatic patient who lungs, they're having a difficult time, you know, exhaling, you know, those restrictive, restrictive lung disease process, the COPDs, emphysemas, asthmas, they have a difficult time exhaling. So I need to give them a longer period of time to exhale. Okay, they've got, otherwise you get, you run into problems with air trapping. So if I drop my respiratory rate, which will work, that might be adequate. Okay, let's go and let's see. Um, their uh, minute ventilation is five liters. So I'm on the low end here. Okay, so uh, maybe that's sufficient, maybe that's not. Another option would be to leave their respiratory rate up a little bit. Okay. And again, this is just really going to depend on the patient, what they're going to tolerate. Um, I can leave the respiratory rate up and I can drop their eye time. Well, let's leave it at one and, and we'll look at what the minute ventilation is. Okay? It's going to take a few, a few cycles, a few breaths for this to uh, catch up. Um, and then it'll kind of give us a full, you know, it'll show us what their minute ventilation is. So you can see here it's starting to starting to climb a little bit. We're up to almost six liters a minute. If I drop their eye time, okay, to 0.8, you can see my IDE ratio is now one to four. So they've got longer uh, a longer period of time to exhale, but their minute ventilation, which you'll see, generally is not going to change. They're still getting the same 450. Uh, and that's tidal volume at the same rate, they're just getting that breath quicker. So again, depending on the patient's condition, they may or may not be able to tolerate that. So that might be another way to maintain ventilation as well as um, oxygenation and, um, and give them that exhalation time. Okay, so let's look at, um, let's see here, what else we wanna talk about? So that's IDE, we, we adjust it using the eye time and the respiratory rate, okay? And we talked about um, minute ventilation and how we can uh, maintain our minute ventilation um, by adjusting the eye time versus the respiratory rate. And uh, we talked about uh, you know, IDE ratios. Now, when would you wanna uh, toy with
ratios. Like I was saying, you've got that restricted lung disease patient who has a difficult time exhaling. That might be somebody that you would want to prolong that IDE, give them a one to four, give them a one to five. It's really going to depend on their situation. Now, if you do have to drop, um, drop their rate for one reason or another, you may have to just uh, allow for that permissive hypercapnia. You may have to allow that respiratory rate to increase. Okay, let's look at um, inverse ratios. So what is an inverse ratio? It's where your inspiratory time is longer than your expiratory time. So how do we do this ventilator? One way we, we can do that is to increase their respiratory rate uh, really high. Okay, so let's just see what happens. Let's turn this back. We'll talk a little bit about mean airway pressures as well towards the end, real quick. Um, but, you know, we're not going to touch on it too much. That'll be for another video. Okay, so our I to D ratio is 1 to 4. I'm going to drop their, the um, tidal volume a little bit. Um, this would be something that you'd have to do fairly quickly on this ventilator just because you can't adjust uh, both settings simultaneously. Okay. Um, but if I... If I drop the if I drop the tidal volume and then look what happens when I start increasing the respiratory rate, okay? It, their IDE ratio is going down. I'm actually going to change this to one second because it'll make the math a little bit easier to uh, understand. So now here we go. I'm at a respiratory rate of 30. One second breath, 30 seconds um, worth of inhalation, 30 seconds worth of exhalation. I'm at a one to one ratio. Now, what happens if I keep going? Okay, I can get all the way up to two to one. If I select this, let's see, what, let's see what's going on here. So see how quickly, so the, the, the lung is getting two seconds of inhalation and only one second of exhalation. And you can almost see that that lung isn't fully deflating. So that's a risk that you run with, um, with these inverse ratios is auto peak. And of course we all know um, that uh, auto peak or any kind of increased intrathoracic pressure uh, will potentially um, cause a hemodynamic collapse. So that's another risk associated with uh, these inverse ratios. So what can we do about this? Well, let's, let's look at this real quick. Um, we've got uh, a, where is it? Okay, so there's our exhale tidal volume, 272, 273, but our tidal volume is set to 300, so we're probably auto-peeping, we're retaining a little bit, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. How can I, uh, how can I adjust this? Real quick, let's take a quick look at the, the mean airway pressures. Remember I said mean airway pressures is the primary pressure for oxygenation. So up to about 20 is fairly safe. The higher the mean airway pressure, the more your oxygen perfusion pressure. So let's go ahead and drop this tidal volume down to about 250. Okay. Let's see what our mean airway pressures does. So Earlier we were saying we need to maintain a minute ventilation in order to maintain uh, that ventilatory status. And if I come over here and we look at what our minute ventilation is, okay, we're at like 9.3. Drop this to 200. Okay, we're only giving the patient 200. Um, liters per minute, I'm sorry, a tidal volume of 200 mLs, but we're giving it to them at 40 breaths a minute. Okay. Our tidal volume is coming down, so we may, be, we may be adequately ventilating this patient, okay? Let's see what their map is. The map is 14. So when might you do something like this? If you've got that really bad um, ARDS patient, that, you know, a really bad lung disease patient, and you've got your your FiO2 is set to 100%, you've got your PEEP is almost maxed out, and they're still not oxygenating well, the next step is to try to manipulate your mean airway pressures. And if you can get your mean airway pressures up, 
then you increase your oxygen perfusion. So you can see if I increase their PEEP, what's going to happen to the mean airway pressure, it should start to climb. And that will potentially in increase or should increase your patient's oxygenation status. Now, if you've already increased your FiO2, you've already increased your PEEP, okay, um, and you're, uh, you're, you're trying to manipulate your mean airway pressures and that's not cutting it too, that's when you can go to this inverse ratio. Okay? That's another way to help boost your mean airway pressures. Another way to in, uh, improve your mean airway pressures, and we'll switch back over to um, like a normal ventilation. So I, it's probably gonna alarm here at first because I can't give 450 tidal volume at 40 breaths a minute. As you see, okay, so now we're at like, we'll set this back to a more kind of normal peep of eight, tidal volume of 450, respiratory rate of 15, I time of one. So let's see what our uh, mean airway pressures are. Okay, I got a one to three ID, and I got a mean airway pressure of 16. Okay, that's pretty, pretty good. Let's go ahead and come in here to the back menu, and I do that by holding down select and switch over. Hey Roseanne, what's up? Nice to see you. Susan, thank you for joining. Vent control. Okay, so we're going here to vent controls and we can manipulate rise time. Now what is rise time? Rise time is how fast the ventilator delivers the breath. And then if you think about eye time or inspiratory time, that's how long the inspiratory breath goes in for. So if I've got an eye time uh, of one, and I turn this, whoops, timed out on me. Turn, go into your vent control, I adjust my rise time, you'll see what happens. See how slowly that breath goes in? I come back up here and I switch my rise time down to one, and I'm just going to the extremes. Hmm. My vent is acting up on me. Let's see. Well, we'll have to talk about rise time again a little bit later. Um, that's interesting. Anyways, um, I guess that's all I had. That was, that was the last thing I wanted to talk about was the rise time um, uh, you know, and how that can affect your mean airway pressures. Um, anyways, I th hope, hope, you, hope you found this uh, helpful. Um, IDE ratios, um, we can use them for improving um, our oxygenation status, our ventilation status, giving the patient adequate time to exhale, uh, and then also um, giving them enough time to adequately fill their lungs by making sure that we've got a long enough inhalation time. So we talked about um, how to manipulate the IDE ratios by adjusting your, uh, your respiratory rate as well as adjusting your inspiratory time. And we looked at a few other things. So I hope this was helpful. Um, Rosanna, is, I'm sure, will comment and uh, correct me if I made any mistakes, which, um, you yeah, know, there's always room for improvement. But uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You guys all know how to get in touch with me. We'll see you in the next video. Talk to you later.